If you know a three-letter word for a sea eagle is an urn, that's E-R-N, chances are you like to spend your time solving these. How many crossword puzzles do you solve a day? At this point, I probably solve an average of 10 a day, maybe more, depending on how busy I am with the rest of my life. Odd trivia and unusual vocabulary are par for the course for crossword puzzle enthusiasts or cruciverbalists like Dan Fair. He's the reigning American crossword puzzle tournament champion and one of the fastest solvers in the country. Those daily 10 puzzles take him all of 10 minutes to do. I know almost every fact about Yoko Ono because Ono is a super famous person as well as a very useful set of letters. You probably also know a lot about Yoda. Y yes. For a hundred years now, we've had a love affair with the crossword. You know, love, as in zero in tennis. Or all you need, according to the Beatles. Keeps your mind sharp and it's a good way for uh, people to get to know each other apparently and eventually leads to marriage and family. So it went for Corey Newman when, with the help of the Washington Post, he proposed to his now wife, Marlo, in a Sunday crossword puzzle. My heart was racing and I was real nervous. She sat down next to me, we started doing the puzzle and she actually uh, completed her name. You know, she figured out Marlo Epstein and I was so sure at that point she would know something was up and sure enough she didn't. She just figured it was the biggest coincidence ever. It wasn't until 51 across the clue, words with a certain ring to them, that Newman got down on one knee. Will you marry? Yes, of course. Oh my God! <laughs> the very first crossword puzzle ran in the New York world on December 21st, a hundred years ago this week. It was the creation of this man. Arthur Wynn. On the Sunday before Christmas in 1913, he invented a puzzle he called a word cross. It was in the shape of a hollow diamond. The first answer across the diagram was filled in for you. It was fun. Will Shorts is crosswords editor for the New York Times. Uh, it was an immediate success with readers, so it became a weekly feature in the world. Um, it, it continued into the early 1920s. And by that time, there were a few other newspapers in the country running crosswords, but very few. Hardly anyone knew this puzzle. All that changed when two young Columbia University journalism graduates decided to enter the world of publishing. They were Dick Simon and Max Schuster. One of them had an aunt who was a big fan of the crosswords in the world, and she suggested they do a book of crosswords. So they went to the puzzle editors at the world, and the trio of editors there put together the world's first crossword book and the very first book by what would become publishing giant Simon & Schuster, which is now owned by CBS. It launched a national craze. The B&O Railroad installed unabridged dictionaries on its trains for the convenience of its puzzle-loving passengers. There were crossword dresses, crossword contests, and all the newspapers with huge prizes. There was a show on Broadway called Puzzles of 1925, in which the climactic scene was set in a crossword puzzle sanatorium. But creator Arthur Wynne, the man who started it all, never cashed in on his invention. He went to his boss and he said, this seems to be taking off. He said, should I have it copyrighted? And he said, no, it's a passing fad, Arthur, don't waste your money. And so it, daddy never made a dime. Catherine Wynne Cutler of Clearwater, Florida, is Arthur Wynne's daughter. Puzzles were part of her childhood. When I was little, he and mother went to the store and left me alone in the house reading. And he said, your instructions are on the kitchen table. And I went out and looked. And there was a picture of a big B. And it was on top of a bed. And the letter 9 was next to it. And I was supposed to figure out that this said, be in bed by nine. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> Cutler says her dad was never angry about not capitalizing on the popularity of the crossword. He was rueful, but he had the grace to laugh. He enjoyed the fact that he had done it and that people did call him the father of the modern crossword. 
Is the crossword as modern as ever? Nowadays, you know, people famously have shorter attention spans. And think about a crossword. A daily puzzle has around 76 clues and answers, each one on a different topic. You're solving a puzzle, your mind's jumping from one thing to the next. I think it's perfect for the modern age.